In this video, I thought we'd take a look at unleashing the power of the female brain. And this information comes from the work of Dr. Daniel Amen. He's a psychiatrist. He's done a bunch of brain scans. You might have seen him on the Dr. Phil show. Dr. Amen is a psychiatrist. Now, his clinics have the world's largest database of brain scans for psychiatry, totally more than 160,000 scans of patients from 150 countries. He's written multiple books, such as Change Your Brain, Change Your Life. He's also written Feel Better Fast, Make It Last. Also wrote The Brain Warrior's Way. Also wrote Memory Rescue. And today we're going to take a look at a book that he wrote called Unleash the Power of the Female Brain. Supercharging Yours for Better Health, Energy, Mood, Focus, and Sex. All right, so let's take a look. It's in a book. So this first slide is the worst, hardest, and the toughest. So let's just power through this one. This is about the strengths and challenges of the female brain. And this particular slide is about challenges, so let's just get through it. So here's some of the challenges that he writes, such as exhibits higher incidence of anxiety, depression, body image issues, eating disorders, physical stress symptoms, and perfectionism. Also repeats the same issue again and again, has trouble turning off her brain, lowers serotonin levels, and worries more. Okay, so let's take a look at some of what the strengths are of the female brain. And this is where Dr. Daniel Amen writes that the strengths are longevity, more serious about physical and mental health, admits problems faster, seeks help and community faster, worries more about her health, has a stronger PFC associated with greater judgment, empathy, and self-control. And you know what, for those of you playing along at the home game, you can download the PDF of this so that you can just take a look at that slide cast. So in over the 160,000 brain scans that Dr. Daniel Amen has done, what he's found is that the brains can basically be categorized into five different types. And the first type he calls is the impulsive type. And this is characterized with poor impulse control and distracted easily. May have trouble not saying or doing whatever comes into their mind. So I guess like no filter. And he found that this is most common with people that are smokers and heavy drinkers. And what he found helps is by boosting their dopamine levels in the brain to help strengthen the PFC. So PFC is prefrontal cortex. Just consider that like the manager for now. And then he writes that when people with the impulsive brain type try to concentrate, they actually get less activity in the PFC, which will cause them to have even less control over their own behavior. So again, dopamine will help boost that up. Next brain type he mentions is the compulsive type. So this exhibits behaviors such as being stuck on negative thoughts and behaviors, worrying, trouble sleeping, argumentative and oppositional. And he also attributes this to having an overactive anterior cingulate gyrus. We'll go into a lot of detail later about that. And it's also associated with anxiety and depression. And what he recommends here to boost serotonin and physical exercise boosts serotonin. And he also talks about supplements that are beneficial. So you can see that list here, 5-HTP, saffron, St. John's work. And he also prescribes SSRIs, right? He's a psychiatrist, so he recommends Prozac and so on. Obviously, you got to talk to your own doctor. Whatever they recommend is the better thing to go with. All right, now let's talk about brain type 3. This is the impulsive compulsive brain. So you might wonder what kind of behavior that would have. So he mentions bulimia. So this is people who are compulsively driven to binge and yet have very little control over their impulses to purge. So this is characterized with an overactive anterior cingulate gyrus, which we're gonna talk about real soon. And with that, people overthink and they get stuck on negative thoughts, and they also have too little prefrontal cortex activity, limiting impulsive control. All right, so let's just take a look at this one sentence here, and then we'll give it a lot more backstory so that you can see how important this anterior cingulate gyrus is. Our scans tend to show too much activity in the anterior cingulate gyrus, the part of the brain that helps shift attention. So people overthink and get stuck on negative thoughts, but they also have too little activity in the PFC or impulsive control area, which means they have trouble supervising their own behavior. So when looking at the anterior cingulate gyrus, when I think of that, I think of this meme. This is Karen. She'd like to speak to the manager. So let's do a sagittal slice on Karen's head here. So we're just going to chop off the right half of her head down the middle here kind of thing. And so here we have a, an image of an MRI showing the anterior cingulate gyrus. It's a yellow bendy bit. Now let's talk about what this thing does. So first off, it's really well connected to the prefrontal cortex. And to take a look at that, again, you can just check out the slides below. And anterior means front. So the front of the cingulate or anterior cingulate, it has the biggest impact on depression. Okay, so 
the anterior cingulate that's really connected with that prefrontal cortex, and it's often functioning as a gateway between the limbic and the prefrontal regions. So in other words, Karen's really well connected, right? She knows the executives in the front, which is the prefrontal cortex, and she's really well connected to the people in the back, which is that limbic system, which is all connected to our emotions. So this anterior cingulate notices all of your mistakes, and it plays a central role in the pain circuit and contributes to the tendency to dwell on everything that's going wrong. Now, another important point is that the neurotransmitter serotonin is highly concentrated in this anterior cingulate. And serotonin is that neurotransmitter system most commonly targeted by antidepressant meds, which is exactly what Dr. Daniel Amen was prescribing and recommending. So when the human brain is presented with stressors, the ACC, which is this anterior cingulate cortex, it activates, which means there's you know, more blood flow, and this plays a role in regulating our blood pressure and our heart rate, right? So Karen's gonna influence our blood pressure and our heart rate. All right, and this last one, which is probably the most karen of them all, which is error detection. So conflict monitoring is an important function of the anterior cingulate cortex that allows us to monitor or scan for incompatibilities in our information processing, which helps us recognize the circumstances most likely to lead to error. So the anterior cingulate gyrus allows us to analyze abnormalities in our own and others' behavior during social interactions. Right, so if something isn't right in our behavior and other people's behavior, then this anterior cingulate gyrus is gonna be lighting up and it's gonna to wanna to speak to the manager. It's gonna to wanna to be able to influence the prefrontal cortex and it's gonna to wanna to be able to influence some of those emotions that are going on. So now let's go back to this sentence and take a look at it again. I think you'll have a lot more context with it. Our scans tend to show too much activity in the anterior cingulate gyrus, the part of the brain that helps shift attention so people overthink and get stuck on negative thoughts. They also have too little activity in the PFC or impulsive control area, which means they have trouble supervising their own behavior. All right, so what else can be done to be able to help this brain type? Uh, one additional great resource I think is Dr. Alex Korb. He wrote this excellent book called The Upward Spiral, using neuroscience to reverse the course of depression one small change at a time, where he writes, trying to think of things to be grateful for forces you to focus on the positive aspects of your life. This simple act increases serotonin production in the anterior cingulate cortex. And deeper in the books he writes, remembering sad events decreases serotonin production in the anterior cingulate. And I want to press on a little further about the important gratitude here. This one has shown that gratitude circuit strengthening can elevate physical and mental health, boost happiness, improve sleep, and help you feel more connected to people. It also has shown that gratitude improves your mood, so when you feel or express gratitude, it's easier to feel positive emotions. All right, and I just want to share with you this last study. This is a study that was done about gratitude and people with suicidal thoughts, and shown that gratitude reduces the likelihood of suicidal thoughts, and it's shown that the effect of gratitude is greatest in people with the most hopelessness. So a little bit of gratitude can go a long way. Number four, which Dr. Daniel Amen calls the sad brain, and this is associated with frequent feelings of sadness, depression, low energy, low self-esteem, and pain symptoms. And the Dr. Daniel Amen brain scans here are called SPECT scans, and they tend to show too much activity in the limbic or emotional parts of the brain common in mood disorder. So let's take a look at this limbic system. This is a deep, old, ancient part of the brain, and it's responsible for getting food and sex and fighting and fleeing and learning and memory and the hippocampus is in there and the amygdala is in there. It like promotes bonding, processes smell. And so people with sad brain tend to show too much activity in this part of the brain, what he calls the emotional parts of the brain, common in mood disorders. And to help this brain type, he suggests boosting vitamin D, uh, exercise, fish oil supplements, for example, this big S word. This thing is available on Amazon. I looked it up, it's got apparently lots of good reviews and it comes in different flavors or different brand names or whatever. So that might be something to check out in case you're interested in it. And he also recommends Wellbutrin. And one additional recommendation from Dr. Daniel Amen for sad brain is exercise. And for this, there are a couple of things to add that you might find valuable. And this is about making exercise a habit. And this concept is a blend between Atomic Habits, which is a hugely popular book by James Clear, and the other is The Joy of Movement by Dr. Kelly McGonigal. 
She's a health psychologist and award-winning lecturer at Stanford University. Now, when it comes to exercise, we may not do it on a schedule or our workouts are perhaps spotty at best and not really grooved as a habit that we can consistently maintain. But what helps is to consider these four items into your exercise so that you can begin to love it with more ease. And the four components are time, space, focus, and metaphor. So for time, you might want to recall times with songs that bring you back to your best so this could be a moment when you were perhaps thinking about the Spice Girls. That was a time when you were working out for some kind of tryout that you were doing. Who knows? For me, it was Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. Next is the space relating to the exercise. So it's got to be easy and obvious and attractive and satisfying. And the third component is focus. So this is about including some kind of affirmations in there or some kind of mantra or thinking about your goals. And the fourth way is to create an exercise that's similar to solving problems. So let's say that you like Spice Girls and hiking. So you get over stuff like rocks and creeks, just like you get over obstacles and setbacks in life, so that you're internalizing that no matter how rough the landscape, that you get through it. And it's all the while that you're keeping fit. And if you want to learn more about creating exercise habits, Kelly McGonagall has a free webinar. And again, that link is also in the free PDF. All right, so let's take a look at the next brain type, which is brain type five, which he calls the anxious brain. And this is characterized by anxiety, tension, nervousness, conflict avoidance, and a tendency to predict the worst. Soothing this type with meditation and hypnosis, plus using a combination of B6, magnesium, and GABA, our patients generally feel more relaxed and more in control of their minds. Now, GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, and there's not much evidence that it can cross the blood-brain barrier, so I'm guessing that most of you are not going to get much benefit with it, but who knows? I mean, if you generally feel more relaxed and more in control of your mind with GABA, then certainly take that for a whirl. But I thought we'd take a look at what he's writing when he writes about meditation and hypnosis. So I'll share with you a couple of quotes here where he writes, Hypnosis and meditation are both powerful ways to soothe your mind and help you create a state of deep relaxation. I have used them in my practice for over three decades and know they are fast and easy ways to calm the mind. And then he writes, studies from Belgium and Canada have shown that hypnosis increases blood flow and activity in the attention areas of the brain and the left hemisphere. And our studies and those done by others, meditation also boosts blood flow to the brain, especially the PFC, the most human thoughtful part of the brain. And I also want to share with you a hypnosis quote from a famous cognitive psychologist named Dr. Jordan Peterson. And in one of his lectures, he said that hypnosis is generally nothing but pronounced relaxation. You have to be susceptible to hypnosis to fall into a hypnotic trance as a consequence of being relaxed. And then he spoke about how he put one of his clients into a hypnotic trance by using the body scan induction. And the significance of the body scan induction is actually quite apparent in this study titled Neural Correlates of Mindfulness Meditation Related Anxiety Relief. And in this study, they used a body scan induction, and overall it showed how it was beneficial for helping out this Kearney brain bit, this anterior cingulate cortex. And if you're looking for body scan meditations to do on your own, there's all kinds of them on SoundCloud, and I will leave in the link below so that you can access these on your own. And while we're on the topic of meditation, I thought I'd just include some information from a different source, and this is from Dr. Robert Lustig, the best-selling author of The Hacking of the American Mind. And then here he speaks about the difference in brains between meditators and non-meditators. So I'm just going to share with you a quote here where he says, meta-analysis of studies comparing meditators and non-meditators demonstrates changes in the brain related to the size of the frontopolar cortex and insula, the hippocampus, the corpus callosum, and most importantly, the anterior cingulate cortex and prefrontal cortex. And then he also speaks about a study done on veterans which helped them out with PTSD and how the benefit lasted for months. And so if you're looking for where to go for hypnosis, there is YouTube and there's also a work here by Dr. David Spiegel and he's been to Harvard, educated also at Yale and he works at Stanford and he's the chief executive officer and he's the co-founder for Reverie, which is a self-hypnosis app. And if you want something at slightly a different speed, there's also a therapist called Marissa Peer. She has hypnosis MP3s available, which you might also find helpful. 
And if you want a more customized, personalized, recorded hypnosis session, you can buy your own at Fiverr and just tell them what you like and they'll get to work crafting your hypnosis MP3. There's all kinds of people on there available. And just to show that there's no hard feelings to any Karens out there, you might want to get this meditation gig from Karen on Fiverr. All right, so let's have a quick review here. So the impulsive brain, which benefits from having an improved prefrontal cortex, and the compulsive brain, which can be improved with SSRIs. Impulsive compulsive brain, which can be improved by strengthening the care interior cingulate gyrus. The sad brain can benefit with vitamin D and exercise. And last is anxious brain, which can be improved with meditation and hypnosis. And that is how you can begin to unleash the power of the female brain. And if you'd like the free PDF, please visit the URL below. This is DS Yvonne at reprogrammingmind.com. Bye for now.